guys, what's going on? Welcome to the Double Chen Show. He's Mike. He's Dan. All right, Mike, the Chinese population is 1.3 billion strong, the largest yeah. on the planet. Mm -hmm. But have you ever wondered about this conglomeration of humans? That's right, Dan. Are they one homogenous mass of Chinese? Are they separated by their dialects like in India? Or are they a big melting pot of people like in the US? Is there a secret society of wizards while the rest of them blindly live their muggle lives? Maybe, but generally, these 1.3 billion can be separated into 56 ethnic groups, and Han Chinese are the vast majority, representing about 91% of the population. The other 55 minorities concentrate mostly along the corners of the country, southwest, northwest, and northeast, and often are groups formed from neighboring country citizens, such as from Mongolia, Korea, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan. So here are the 56 ethnicities of China. Check it out. Got it, everybody? Good. That's all we have for you today, so thank you so much for watching. No, just kidding. Come on, man. We got to tell them more, right? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but we can't talk about all 56, so here are the 10 largest Chinese ethnic groups. Number one, the Han. The Han represent 91% of China's population and roughly 20% of the Earth's entire population. They are basically the world's largest ethnic group. They derive their name from the Han Dynasty, the longest ruling empire in Chinese history. Oh, uh, you know how you can tell you're Han? You have this, uh, the Han mark right uh, here. Are, are you sure you're not just showing them your muscle right now? Uh, well, is this not an, is this an excuse to show off your muscle? Okay, you, you can't. You can't. <laughs> no, no, seriously, no. there is a line. If you check your arm, all the Han people, you guys, you see that? See that little line right there? Do That's I the Han it? mark. Do I have it? Uh, I don't know. Do you have it? What? Oh yeah, I have it right here. <laughs> I thought it was gone. So you and I are both Han. That's right. And uh, how many of you guys just checked yourself right now? Huh? Yeah. So basically, the Han ethnicity makes up about 90%. The rest are only 10%? Yes, the rest are all considered the ethnic minorities of China. So number two on our list are the Zhuang people. The Zhuang are the largest ethnic minorities of China. They're similar to America's Native Americans and totem poles and they honor their ancestors. Most are polytheists, which is believing in the powers of inanimate objects in nature, such as giant trees, high mountains, the earth, the sun, and the water. But you can paint with all the colors of the wind. Nice. I like, I like that. that. Number three are the Hui. In ancient times, Chinese called the Muslims, the Jewish people, and Christians Hui Hui, which is where this ethnic group originated from. Hui communities are scattered throughout the country, with their current prevailing religion being Muslim. They tend to be a very disciplined, serious people and have strict dietary restrictions. One seriously distinctive restriction is that they do not eat the most common meat in China, pork. Uh, that's pretty impressive. And I gotta say, yeah. So no more hui guo rou, yeah. no more a lot of things. Uh, yeah, pork shoulder. But I gotta tell you, soup man, dumplings. I gotta tell you, yeah. The best food in the city where I'm from, yeah, is from Hui Mingjie, really? which is the street, this district full of hui people, right? And they have the cleanest, tastiest mm. dishes, like yang rou pao mo. Oh, the, cause you, but so you could eat lamb. Oh, it's so good. Okay. Their lamb is so good. So it's not you can't eat meat, you just can't eat pork. You can't eat pork. Okay, that's right. So you're saying like the lamb, all the oh, beef. So good. Wow. Thinking about it right now. And they're wow. so clean. Really? Because they're, they buy by such strict rules when they're cooking. Mm. So they they're make some of the cleanest dishes in China. The next one is the Manchu people. The Manchu stand as the fourth largest ethnic group. I would have guessed that they were the largest minority, but hey, you learn something new every day. Yeah, because they actually took over a dynasty. That's what I thought. Um, in China. But I love Manchu people because they're like all hardcore fashionistas. Their signature look is the half-shaved heads with long ponytails for the males. Like you mentioned, during their rule of China over the two dynasties of Qing and Qing, all Han Chinese people were forced to have the same hairstyle. The Chinese who refused to change their hairstyle were actually beheaded. Can you say fashion fascists? How about saying that three times fast? Uh, fashion, fashion fascists. Fashion fascists. Fashion, 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 yeah. fashion fascists. Oh yeah, I have no idea what I'm saying anymore. It's really hard to say. Also, the women of the Manchu court wore the first high heels and walked gracefully with a handkerchief in hand. Those were called flower pot shoes and had heels that were in the middle of the shoe. So walking in them required grace and balance and, you know, 
incredible tolerance to foot pain. Yeah. Number five, you'll find the Uyghur people. Uyghurs are thought to have gotten their name from the word which means those who tend to come together or united. And they really are just that. Their ethnicity is a mixture of Caucasian and Asian, and though they mostly live in the Tarim Basin, also known as Nanjiang in Chinese, they can also be found in Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Germany, Russia, and Turkey. So all the stands. <laughs> Number six, Ni Hao Miao. <laughs> I see what you did there. The Miao people live in Guizhou, Hunan, and Yunnan provinces and include Hmong people. They are known for their beautiful embroidery and large intricate silver jewelry. The pleated skirts women wear can also have as many as 40 layers. Number seven leads us to the Yi people. It's kind of like your girlfriend's people. Anyway, the Yi lived mainly in the mountainous areas of southwestern China. Women wear rainbow colored skirts and a woman's reputation is greatly influenced by her embroidery skills. Of course, drinking tea is very important to Chinese people and the Yi take it to a whole new level. They have a tea for every single situation like uh, Yingbing Cha or the tea for welcoming guests, Xu Ku Cha or the tea for confiding hopeless things, and San Men Cha or teas for dispelling boring moods, which I'm hoping none of you guys are drinking right now. <laughs> I bet some people are gonna write in the comments. That's what I'm drinking right yeah, now. Because you wow. guys are wow. putting me to sleep. Wow. Next one, number eight are the creative Tuja people. Today, traditional Tuja customs can only be found in the most remote areas, with only 70,000 Tuja language speakers left. The Tuja are renowned for their singing and song composing abilities and for their tradition of the Bai Shou Wu or Bai Shou Dance, a 500 year old collective dance which uses 70 ritualistic gestures to represent war, farming, hunting, courtship, and other aspects of traditional life. They are also famous for their richly patterned brocades, which we often see on cheap house or other traditional Chinese wear. Back in ancient times, Tuja people even used these beautiful brocades since they were so highly sought after as a form of currency to trade for other items. And the ninth biggest ethnic group in China are the Tibetans. Ethnic Tibetans live on the high Tibetan plateau of southwestern China. Most are devout followers of Buddhism. Visiting guests are treated to great hospitality and a cup of warm milk tea. With bubbles? No. Anyway. But you know what milk it is though, right? Yes. It's from a yak. Yeah. Would you drink that? No, I, I mean, I would do it if they offered it to me. I but mean, that's I, just rude if you probably, turn it down. And there's butter in it. Too. You know what I would say? Yeah. I'd be like, yo, I don't drink milk tea that doesn't have any bubbles in it. Oh. Sorry. Sorry, you gotta get some bubbles. And they they're like, we don't have bubbles. Make so you like, climb oh, down the mountain. I can't drink it. Very special guests receive kata, a strip of long flowy silk used as a greeting or departing gift or for ceremony in devotion to gods. And finally, number 10 on our list are the Mongols or Mongolians. Most Mongols are semi nomadic herders who participate in contests of horsemanship, wrestling, shooting, and archery. They are a friendly, welcoming people that have a dance for every piece of dining wear they use, such as the chopstick dance, the bowl dance, maybe the teacup dance, or the saucer dance, I don't know, all kinds of dances. So, did you just- Do I look graceful? Not only have you brought disgrace to the Mongols, but are you also trying to do the finger movements of the Tuja? Yeah, this is graceful, man. Yo, this means uh, like I'm that's a really I'm a balanced young man. I don't know. But when you actually see this dance being done, I'm pretty sure that doing some cool stuff as opposed to yeah, just... it's not it's not as you know. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it, go back in the video archives where me and Mike try to uh, teach each other how to dance with the internet on this yeah, channel. That's so awesome. So guys, those are the top ten Chinese ethnicities. Out of the remaining ethnic groups, we don't want to completely leave them out. Here are some interesting ones to take a note of. Chanizu. Formerly, the women used to tattoo their faces when they reached the age of 12 or 13. The tattoos of some women even resemble masculine mustaches. Wow. Um, well, I mean, just because we find it kind of weird, maybe other people find that very attractive. So, Dan, um, I mustache you a question. Okay. Let's see what I did there. Oh man, <laughs> that was good. I like that would one. You, uh, would you get a little mustache? Well, I'm a, like I'm a guy, so I, sure, I'll get a tattoo. Because you know, that's gonna help you fill in your uh, that's right. gaps right there. That, I mean, your failed mustache right there. I might do a uh, Fu Manchu tattoo. Yeah, that, 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 that would look awesome. Next, sure. 
The Shu people live in the mountainous regions of China. They particularly love to sing. During the wedding ceremony, the bridegroom will only receive each dish and dishware by singing. For example, if he needs a pair of chopsticks, he must sing the song of the chopsticks. How does that go? I, I don't know. I was gonna ask you. Chopsticks. Mm, yeah, they. I, but in Chinese, probably. yeah, I but not say. in Chinese, but like you know, in the, the, their local dialect. Probably right, right. Not English. I don't, I don't know not Chinese. Not Mandarin, not Mandarin Chinese. Not Cantonese. Yeah. I don't know how that goes. But yeah. I guess I will not be able to eat. Wow, so you butchered that too. Yeah. So we're just butchering people's customs left and right so today. Sorry. Next, Nu Zhu. Women learn to weave woolen socks in their childhood, and when they grow up, they give them to their lovers as gifts. The boy's acceptance shows he loves the girl, and the refusal, of course, shows his rejection. So, like, instead of a ring, they give you a sock. You know, which is more practical? Because what does a ring do for you, really? Yeah. What does it do? But a sock that keeps you warm, my exactly. friend. Exactly. So when you propose to Yi, give her a pair of socks. No, she gives me a pair of socks. Oh, that's right. The woman weaves it, Yo. and the boy accepts it. Yeah. Or denies it. Yeah. You tell her that. That's right. Better be the color I that's like. That's right. So guys, even though a lot of people say, "Oh, you Chinese people all look the same," or "You're all the same," but now you know that we are actually a very diverse group of people that just happen to all have. Black hair, yeah, <laughs> and incredibly good looks, cause we Chinese are good looking. Yeah, it's funny that you're Han, but come on, Mike doesn't look hot. Yeah, I don't, come I don't on. look very Chinese. Come I on. got called Tibetans a lot, Mongolian. Yeah, I get uh, what do you get? Do you believe this? Uh, sometimes people are like, "Are you Korean?" I'm like, "Well, I think Korean men. I'm, I'm too short. First of all, Korean men are much taller than yeah. me. I've gotten Mexican before. You got Mexican when, uh, when in the summertime when I, when I get really, really dark. dark yeah. I got Filipino or Mexican because I also had much longer hair. But you know, guys, we wanted to show you this video for a while now. A lot of people don't know that there's so many different ethnic groups. Exactly. And uh, one showcase that's really awesome at uh, you know learning about these ethnic groups at Shunyan Performing Arts. That's right. Most of the ethnic groups that we mentioned have one time or another been on stage. N not the people from that region, yeah, but, right. but the dancers that portrayed them. Right, portrayed them and they danced to beautiful music. For example, when you said the Mongolian dance, yes. um, you can they actually act see the Mongolian bull dance. That's they right. They actually did it. And that's why when Mike did it, I was like, man, you are, you are yeah, butchering this. They actually put this. like three bowls on their heads. So that's and really they cool. do like flips and twirls. Crazy. We'll uh, put all the information below. Actually, they're coming to New York in January. So yeah, so definitely go, go check that out. Yeah. And uh, they're actually touring around all around the world. That's so right. anywhere you are, check out the link, see if you can get some tickets. Right. It's definitely a great show. And let us know how you liked it. I know a lot of people actually went and saw it last year when we talked about it and they exactly. uh, tweeted us and let us know. It's the one show where a lot of things we talk about, you actually see it on stage, being musical instruments, uh, traditional Chinese history and legends. You actually see that yeah. on stage. So check it out guys. And again, thank you so much for watching this yeah. video. Don't forget to sub to our channel and all that good stuff. See you later. Later.